Welcome to the 8th in our Seriously Pro Flight Controller series. In this one we're going to talk about adding telemetry. Now one of the things that I've struggled with, probably the most with setting this board up, has been the telemetry, where with the NASI 32 is very straightforward. And that's because there are so many options on the Seriously Pro, how you can connect things together, and if you're using different things at different ports, it can become a little bit confusing. So one of the things you're going to notice as we go through this video is we're using a reasonably clean setup to actually install the telemetry onto. And we're actually going to disconnect something that we've already connected up in order to get this to work. Now at the moment we're running version 1.9 of Clean Flight, version 1.10 or 1.10 of Clean Flight is almost finished. We're recording this at the end of September. And in 1.10, it gives us soft serial back. So we can actually have another two ports available for those of us that are using either SBUS or PPM. We can use those additional pins on the side, just like we did in things like the NASA 32. So at the moment, this video is kind of one that we're having to do because we have no other option. We're kind of running out of ports, and I'll explain why. And uh, later on, I'll do a video on the soft serial when it comes out of what that all looks like and what extra things that allows us to do. So the first thing to do is very quickly talk about the FR Sky telemetry. This is the one we're going to be using in the video. There's actually two types of telemetry for FR Sky radios like this. This is my trusty Tyrannus Plus. Uh, there's an entire series on this radio on the channel if you're interested in knowing more. And I'm not going to cover too much about the radio itself. So if you want to know more about radio telemetry on the Tyrannus, I'll put a link in the description to that video that takes you through it. But if we go back and just show you the two different types of telemetry, here is an FR Sky D4R2. This is using the old style telemetry. So on the back we have uh, four pins, receive, transmit, AD2 and ground. And to get this to work, we just connect up that receive pin to the SP3. Similarly, there's also something else. There's something called smart port. Now this is an X series receiver which I'll use smart port and here on the left hand side you can see there's a smart port input. There's actually a little smart port sensor plugged into it right now but that little smart port sensor here on the left is the one we're going to use and again there's a minus and a plus and the S stands for the signal. So all we have to do is again just connect the signal to the SP3 to get telemetry to work nice thing about the Seriously Pro is that you don't need any wacky inverters or any craziness like that. You can actually get both of these to work natively by just connecting one single wire from the either receive pin on something like a D-series receiver or the S pin, which is the smart port pin, on something like an X-series receiver. So let's have a look at what our options are to actually connect everything up. And this is where my confusion came from. So if we look at the manual, you can see that looking through here, with the way we have it configured is we're already using uh, UART2 for our GPS. We're using UART1 for our on-screen display. We've already done those in the series. So it looks like UART3 is the one we can use. And if you actually look at UART3, it's the one here on the left and it says that we can use it for serial RX. Um, mustn't be used when PWM receivers are in use. We don't have that. And it mustn't be used at the same time as IO um, on IO2, pins 3 and 4. Again, we're fine. Doesn't mean a problem. But let's just take a step back and have a look at what we've actually connected so far in the series to the board. So here we have our SP3 in the middle and we have UART1 connected to our Minim OSD running the MSP telemetry protocol and that's working beautifully. Then we have UART2 connected up to our GPS. Again, that's set for 115200 board. Again, working beautifully. So UART3 is free. It's not. UART3 is actually enabled and we'll see this in a minute when we jump into Clean Flight itself is actually being used to understand the signals coming in from the serial receiver. Now we're using SBUS at the moment, which comes from the X4R, and because we're using SBUS, UART3 is actually being used for that, so it isn't available for anything else. So 
If we had soft serial available, we could plug the next thing into a soft serial port, but as we're using 1.9 of CleanFight right now, we're not gonna have that option. So let's have a very quick look at the different options we have at where we can plug the telemetry into the SP3 if we haven't got all this to think about. First option is to use UART2. So the one that we had at the top that we were using for our GPS is an ideal candidate to use for telemetry. So we just need to connect the transmit pin on UART2 to that smart pin or the receive pin on the receiver that we're interested in. Just that one cable. The next option that we could have is to plug it into UART3. But again, we could only use that if we're not using a serial receiver. So if we're using PPM or PWM, UART3 would be an option for us. And finally, we could use pin 6 on um, the IL-1 if soft serial was available and we're running greater than version 1.10. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to install it like this. I'm going to use UART2. So I'm going to disconnect my GPS because I'm not going to be using GPS anyway right now for flight. And I'm going to use it for telemetry, which I'll probably use more on day-to-day -day flying. And all we need to do is to connect the single cable to the FR Sky X4R to the smart port in, and we need to connect it to the transmit pin on the board. There's only three steps when we go into clean flight in a second that we have to do to configure it once we have it wired up. First, we've got to obviously physically connect it together, which we've seen. Second, then we need to configure the port as smart port. And I'll do that in a second to show you what that looks like so that there's no confusion. And then finally, in the command line interface, we need to set the telemetry inversion to one. We need to actually invert the telemetry signals inside clean flight. So now we understand all that, let's start clean flight up, connect to the board. I'm gonna connect my FR Sky just like this. So I'll just um, show you a little image of what that looks like on the board. Apologies for looking a little bit scrappy, um, but the board has been in uh, several orientations and setups trying to get this to work. But you can see here clearly that we have the green cable that's coming out of the FR Sky receiver. That's the one that's actually connecting up to the smart port in, and that's connecting to the wire that goes back to the transmit pin on UART2. Okay, we've got that connected up. Let's go into clean flight, and I'll show you what we need to do, those last couple of steps on the screen, and we'll finish it off. So we're back on the netbook, and we have our SP3 connected to it via the USB cable. Don't have any flight battery or anything installed. We don't need this to set this up. So the First thing we need to do is configure the port. So if we jump into ports, then you'll see that we have smart port enabled for UART2. So this is the one where initially in the series we had it enabled for GPS. So we're not going to set it up that way. We're going to set it up for smart port. And again, if you click down, you can actually see that if we were going to be using a D4R2 or a D series receiver, we'd select FR Sky. There is the MSP, the Multi-We Serial Protocol that we've actually used for things like the on-screen display, and there's Smart Port, which is the one we've got selected now. We need to leave the setup as automatic. We don't want to select uh, speed. We're just gonna leave it as auto and let Clean Flight do the work. Then we're gonna click Save and Reboot. Once we've saved and rebooted, then we go into Configuration. We scroll down to the very bottom and then we click on an enable telemetry output and again click save and reboot. The last thing we need to do is then set up the telemetry inversion. So we need to go into the command line interface and you can see how it's set already. If you just type in set and hit enter, there's all the settings that's on the board as it stands right now. If I go towards the top, You can see that mine is set for telemetry inversion equals one. Now yours will probably say telemetry inversion zero. So I'm just going to copy that and say set telemetry inversion equals one is how you want to do it. Hit enter. Once you've hit enter, type in save and hit enter again. 
and once it's at save it will then reboot and you should be in business. So let's finally go onto the desk and I'll actually show you what this looks like. The thing to remember here is because we're using a UART, it will only get telemetry data when we actually arm the board. The only thing I will do in here, because I've kind of um, played with everything, is I will make sure the motors are stopped when everything's armed. That way guarantees that when I arm the board to demo this to you in a second, we don't have to uh, compete with the sound of the motors. Okay, great stuff. Let's disconnect that, go back to the bench, and I'll show you it working. So here we have the telemetry sheet showing on the radio. So the trick, of course, is that it only starts to come down once you've armed the board, and once you've armed the board and it's running, you tend to get the telemetry appearing. It does take a couple of seconds for everything to kind of work itself out before you get the telemetry down onto the radio itself. I have had a couple of problems uh, trying to figure out how to get things like voltage and stuff down. I might need to update my Trionis radio to the latest version of OpenTX to try. On here I've been playing with having my heading and also showing the values of the accelerometers on the board for both X, Y and Z. So hopefully in the later versions of Clean Flight in 1.10 and uh, further the telemetry will get a little bit easier to use and also with the addition of things like the soft serial ports it'll also give us other options where we can plug the receiver in as well so you could also have a receiver and a GPS and everything else that you want on the board straight out of the pack. So thank you very much for watching. Do remember though that the telemetry is one that you have to be a little bit careful of. If you're trying to use this and you're struggling to get telemetry to work and you followed these instructions in the video, these are the instructions that I eventually had to go through with Hydra, who's actually the gentleman that's kind of in charge of uh, the clean flight operating system for the SP3. If this doesn't work and you're having problems or you're trying other configurations and it's not working, then please let the developers know so we can continue to improve this part of Clean Flight and the SP3. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.